Today Jesus is being uncompromising. Uh, uncompromising, he was very blunt in saying that following him is the absolute importance. Nothing surpasses following Jesus, right? Nothing is more paramount than following him. We hear the two brothers of um, John and James, you know, well known as the sons of thunder, right? It was because of this verse when they call, Lord, do you want to call this thunder fire huh? upon this uh, Samaritan town who had um, rejected them. You know very well that uh, Samaria, um, Samarian and the Jews are like you know, dogs and cats, right? They don't get along together. These two tribes, they are very much opposed to each other. They, you can say they hate each other. And so, but Jesus actually rebuked James and John um, so that it says that even our love for our tribe, right, must not um, surpass the call to follow Jesus and his commandments to love one another and not to do any harm to even your enemies, you must love your enemies. So love of your tribe. Sometimes people, yes, yes, follow Jesus, but when it comes to our own tribe, woo, they forget suddenly. All God's law just, you know, fall away. So then what's the next thing? They met a man who said, I will follow you wherever you go, right? And Jesus said, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. What does that mean? Having a place to lay your head means um, a life of comfort, right? A comfortable life. We all want a comfortable life. Is it wrong to have a comfortable life? No, it's not wrong at all, right? Um, if uh, the world striving to make uh, living living more comfortable, and it's a good thing, it's a very good thing to make our lives comfortable. You know, we're not meant to really uh, suffer and suffer and suffer. No, but even that good thing of a comfortable life must not become the center of our lives, right? Is it more important to have a comfortable life or to follow Jesus, right? And in fact, his li in his life, he never built a house for his own, right? Um, he was in what we call an itinerant uh, preacher, an itiner itinerant missionary, right? Who goes, who went from one place to another, right? until he went to Jerusalem uh, and faced his cross. So, not a love for our tribe, not even, you know, the love for a comfortable life. And next, another one said, follow me. Uh, he said, follow me. He says, let me go and bury my father first. Now, not even your tribe, not even a comfortable life. Now, a love for your family, right? A love for your family. And he said, no, right? Leave the dead to bury the dead. Well, I, like if you have someone, if, I, if you come to me, I'll be an MGO, but let me bury my father. And then I said to you, well, leave the dead, bury the dead. You'll be very upset, won't you? Huh? <coughs> what do you think, Aswin? You'll be very upset. And yet Jesus is so blunt, so uncompromising, and he says, right, following 
Jesus, following Him is even more important than uh, your duty for your family. Lastly, someone said, I'll follow you, but let me first say goodbye to my people at home. Let me say, let me say goodbye to the, those who are dearest to me, right? Those who I really love uh, the most. And Jesus said, uh, you know, um, once the hand is laid on the plow, what does the plow mean, right? The plow is when you membajak uh, sapi, you got this, this thing that you hold, right? It's placed on the, on the ox um, and you just go and they walk, right? They say you don't turn your head and look back because if you look back, you know, things will go off kilter, right? And then you'll fall. You must keep your eyes focused. And that's what Jesus is. You know, you hear again and again, Jesus is resolutely going to Jerusalem, going to face his cross. Once you place your hand on the plow and said, I'll follow you, we don't look back, he said, right? Because that, does, that means you're not fit for the kingdom of God because then your journey will just go and then uh, off kilter. So what it means is that we ask this, the question, what is the center of my life, right? Is the center of my life Jesus or some other good things? Can be very good, can be even the people that we love the most, the people that have loved us most, right? Is the center of our life. Is Jesus central? That's the question, right? It means also detachment of anything, right? That is not Jesus uh, and not really holding those things too tightly that we say no when the call comes and uh, as a result, we don't have Jesus as the center of our life. That's why uh, the, the first thing that we do in the morning is adore the Lord. That's a sign, a practice for us to have Him as the center of our lives. Oftentimes, the first is the center, you know, what's first in the morning. What could be also good for us is to see our, the movement of our hearts. When in the morning, right, what keeps me away? What's going on in my heart? Am I, do I really want to do something else first than going and see Jesus, right? That could be one thing that, okay, that's, that's one thing that I need to work on. Maybe it's my family. I'm so worried about my family and this and that. And it's, ah, oh, well, I, I won't go and see uh, Jesus at the adoration. That could be it. It could be a comfortable thing. Maybe the bed is more comfortable. Huh? Can be a bit like that, see, the comfort. Could be so many different things. Could be my mobile phones, right? Maybe it could be coffee. Who knows, right? So, comfort. So, we ask that questions and um, it's the detachment that Jesus is calling. But I want to suggest that it's so hard to detach ourselves from these good things, right? Anyway, they are good things and um, we, we live with all these, these uh, other goods, right? We live amongst the family, those, the people that love us. We, uh, build a place and we stay and we have a place to lay our head and all that, right? And the, the other way that I, I think is a good way is instead of focusing so much on detaching ourselves from everything, that we focus ourselves on attaching ourselves to Jesus more tightly than these other things, right? That's why we are missionaries of God's love. We're not saying we are missionaries of detaching ourselves from other loves in the world, do we? No, we're not, right? So what it means is that we want to fall in love and experience 
God's love first so much that we are so in love with God that these other things becomes a shadow, right? It becomes a shadow to us because of the experience of God's love in our lives. I still remember my formator saying me, when you want to become a missionary of God's love, what is your first mission? The first mission is to fall in love and experience the love of God. That And that's the only way I think you, we can be detached of these other loves, right? Which oftentimes is an expression of God's love too to us. But we know that this is actually God's love, right? So, we recently just watched that movie, Six Sister, Sister Acts, right? Sister Acts. Uh, Sister X, when, the, when they say me, Sister, Sister X, I heard them saying Sister X. <laughs> so Sister X reminds me of the Brother X, the Brother X that we don't know who that brother is. And perhaps that's the Sister X. <clears throat> There's a Sister X, Dolores Van Cartier, who were not really a, who was not really a sister, but she was in that convent. And that's when she actually experienced God's love for her, you know. She lived in worldly things. She's probably attached to so many things, her career, you know. Uh, she was attached to this uh, man who is not her husband and, uh, and comfortable life. She hates being in a convent and uh, all the clothes and all are very uncom uncomfortable, nice food. And you see that, right? And yet, at the end of that movie, the song was paramount, right? That song, I will follow him, right? It's so beautiful. And it's that experience of God's love that she was able to be detached, you know, even to the care of her own life. She didn't care much. She doesn't care much because she loves uh, these people, uh, the sisters, that, you know, even though she has to face death, she just went and go for it. That was her calling. Jesus called her in a very mysterious way, right? And then at the end with the Pope, you know, they sang this, this song. So um, it's a beautiful thing. I think um, when we think the impossibility of, of following Jesus, right? We see in that example, even for someone who is so unlikely, to follow Jesus, like this uh, Dolores Van Cartier. What's her name? Sister, she got a name, Sister Mary, Mary, Cat, Mary Catherine, Mary something like that, <laughs> her fake name. She, she was able, it's the Holy Spirit that gives her an experience of God's love. God's love is so powerful on her that she was just, it was so irresistible for her. and. And as a result, she was able to, to uh, make Jesus as the center of, of her life. So deep a story in a very funny way, right? That song is so, um, so uh, paramount, so, so pinnacle of that story, you know. I will follow him, follow him wherever he may go. Um, there is an ocean too deep, a mountain so high he can keep. Keep me away, away from his love. And then I love him, I love him, I love him. And where he goes, I follow, I follow, I follow. He'll always be my true love, my true love, my true love. From now until forever, forever, forever. Right, so um, following Jesus is not um, so much an experience of, oh, give up this, I have to give up that, I have to give up that, but it's really more because you're so in love. You know when someone is so in love, they don't care if that person is from one tribe or not. Sometimes people so love a person that they're willing to go through all these barriers between tribes, right? You know all these love stories, right? Uh, when someone is so in love with someone, um, they're willing to even give his or her own life for the person that 
he or she loves, right? So that's what we want to uh, place ourselves. The only way is by the Spirit of God's love, the Holy Spirit, love itself. When we are so consumed by the Spirit of God's love, we're able to be detached. Doesn't mean we don't love these people that we love. It doesn't mean we don't um, bring comfort to our lives. It doesn't mean we don't uh, bury our father and mother, but to wait and say, God, you wait. I'll do these other things first. That's, that's not what it is because God's love is so irresistible that we just can't wait, right? We're so um, in love with God that following Him is so natural to us. What seems so unnatural that Jesus say is actually the most natural thing to us human being because we're made for love of God. We're made out of love. We're made for God's love and we're made to be in love with God and in his kingdom and will be fit for the kingdom and give glory to his love now and forever.